Hiya! Welcome back! It's almost that time of year again, so this video is going to be Halloween style! I've got this boring little house and I'm going to turn it into an actual haunted house. And I have a spooky little story about this exact house. So, let's see what we can make of it. <laughs> Ghosts in the House by Bradford H. Robbie By the time Asher heard the piano playing, he was already freaked out. So many creepy things had happened in the last few days that he didn't need any more convincing the house was haunted. But why him? Why did it seem he was being singled out and not his parents? It started soon after they moved in. Asher's parents had always dreamed of owning an old house. They have so much character, his mother would say. And so, after endless hunting with a real estate agent, they found one. A five-bedroom Victorian, built nearly 90 years ago by a woman who once ran a candy company. It had everything people love about old houses, like a big staircase, fancy woodwork and lots of fireplaces. It was a short walk to the school, the library and even a small general store. A couple of Ash's friends said it was haunted, but he laughed it off. His parents even joked about it, saying they'd always wanted a haunted house. That was before the first incident. Asher had finished setting up his room. Posters mounted, computer on the desk, books on the bookshelf. To celebrate, he cracked open a large top of bubblegum his grandmother had given him. It came with 225 pieces of Gazooka his favourite brand, and he had about 20 left. He dumped a handful on his desk, unwrapped one and started chewing. Mmm, Asher murmured. He loved Gazooka, from its sweet and sour lemon-lime flavour to its crazy neon green colour. When he woke up the next morning, he looked at his desk in alarm. The pieces of gum he'd left there were arranged in a distinct frowny face. A chill ran down his spine. His first instinct was to bolt out of the door, but then he stopped and laughed at himself. This had to be one of his mum's practical jokes, like the time she faked him out with an ice cream sundae that was actually mashed potatoes and gravy or when she stuffed the toes of his sneakers with toilet paper. Of course, Asha had just as much fun pranking her back, like the time he left a rubber snake in the mailbox. Convinced this was another of her practical jokes, he hurried downstairs to breakfast. Very funny, Mum, he said, barely suppressing his grin. She looked at him quizzically. What's very funny? You know, Asha said. Putting the gum in a face like that, so creepy. When his mum cocked her head as if not understanding a word he said, Asha insisted on showing her. But when they got to his room, the same pieces of gum were now standing on their ends and arranged in a circle like a miniature Stonehenge. How'd you do that? Asha exclaimed. They weren't like that a minute ago. Now it was his mom who was screening. Very mysterious. And it's not even April Fool's Day. But it would have been more effective if you'd done it to something of mine, like my china figures or the jars in my spice rack. But Asha protested, no buts, we're running late, better get ready for school. That was just the beginning. That afternoon Asha's mom called upstairs as soon as she got home and she didn't sound happy. I want to show you something, she said. There, on her favourite couch, was a lump of green bubblegum, eyebrows raised 
she waited for an explanation. Asha was dumbfounded. I didn't put it there. You're the only one in the house who chews gum. Asha was totally baffled. Could he have done these things in his sleep? He wondered. Feeling unfairly accused but unable to explain it, he cleaned up the gum. The next morning, his mum found a piece stuck to the kitchen table. If this is your idea of a joke, it is not funny, she scolded. But it wasn't me, Asha protested. His mum folded her arms across her chest. Right, the next thing you're gonna tell me is a ghost did it. For the first time, Asha considered the possibility. Maybe it is a ghost, he said in desperation, but his mum wouldn't listen. She nodded towards the gum. Please dispose of it properly. From there, things only got weirder. The next afternoon, while doing his homework, Asher heard someone playing the piano downstairs. But that couldn't be. His mum was still at work. He stood at the top of the stairs, listening. It was a simple melody, but one he hadn't heard his mum play before. Mom? he called. When she didn't answer, he descended the stairs to the living room, where they kept the piano. But there was no one there. Asher's eyes were drawn to a scrap of paper lying underneath the piano, which he picked up to examine. It was a wrinkled and faded bubblegum wrapper, and by the look of it, quite old. Just then, he felt a rush of cold air as if someone had just walked by and the stairs creaked mysteriously. Asher froze in his place. Is someone there? He called, feeling his voice tremble. He was beginning to think there really was a ghost. He closed himself in the kitchen and didn't move until his parents got home. Guys, I'm telling you, I think the house is haunted, he said excitedly, recounting what had happened. His mom and dad exchanged glances. Look, his mum said. I know we joked about buying a haunted house, but I haven't seen anything unusual. You know, his dad said, old houses make all sorts of strange noises. But the piano, the footsteps, don't you think that's even a tiny bit strange? No, there was a practical logical explanation for everything they insisted. The piano was merely a car with its radio on, the creaking Stairs were caused by the house shifting, whatever that means. Asher showed them the gum wrapper. Then how do you explain this? His mum shrugged. Maybe it was under the radiator and I dislodged it while vacuuming. She gave Asher a concerned look. Are you trying to scare us? Is it because you don't like the house? No, Asher said. I love the house. It's just... All these weird things keep happening to me. But it was of no use. His parents didn't believe in ghosts. Just after midnight, Asher woke up with a start. He must have kicked up his covers and blanket and his room was freezing. He became aware of a noise, like someone chewing. He searched his room, but it was impossible to tell where it was coming from. He was about to run into his parents' bedroom, but decided not to. They would just offer more annoyingly rational excuses. It's a drafty house. It's the mice. It's your imagination. Shivering, he lay back on his back, eyes wide open. He needed help. And he knew who he would turn to, his friend Corby. He believed in UFOs and Bigfoot, so ghosts wouldn't be a stretch. Tomorrow, he would tell Corby everything. They'd finished cross-country practice and were walking home to Asher's house while Asher gave Corby the play-by-play -play of the ghostly happenings. That's pretty creepy, Corby admitted, but at least they're harmless pranks. It's not like the ghost is doing anything evil, if it really is a ghost that is. It has to be, Asher insisted, but why am I being haunted and no one else? Corby stopped to read the historical plaque that was mounted on the front of Asher's house. Theodora Flearson House, 1934, it says. 
He turned to Asher. What do you know about this Theodora person? Asher shrugged. Not much. But on the real estate website, it said she was the heiress of a candy company. Hmm, Colby said, nodding thoughtfully. Let's Google her. A few minutes later, they found a Wikipedia page. Daniel Flearson and his wife Theodora McTops Flearson founded the Pine Sap Confectionery Company in 1910. From their company in Pine Sap, New Hampshire, the company manufactured chocolate and hard candy. Following Daniel's death in 1929, Theodora took over the company, introducing Jumbo Bubble Bubblegum in 1930. Individually wrapped in wax paper with a distinctive red, yellow and blue design. The gum came in one colour, pink, and sold for a penny a piece. After being featured at the Chicago World's Fair in 1933, Jumbo Bubble exploded in popularity. Shortly after, Flearson built a sprawling Victorian home on Pine Seps Main Street where she lived until her death in 1975, at age 85. Admired for its architectural details, she called it the house that Jumbo Bubble built. A series of photographs showed how Jumbo Bubble's gum wrapper had evolved over the years. Asher pointed out the old... Asher pointed to the oldest wrapper. That's just like the one I found. Then Corby clicked the link and an old advertising jingle began to play. Jumbo Bubbles, that is the one. Sweet and juicy, tons of fun. Bigger bubbles and longer chew. Jumbo Bubbles is the gum for you. Ash's face turned white. What's the matter, Corby said. You look like you've seen a ghost. Ha! Asher had to swallow before he could speak. That's the song I heard playing on the piano. Corby's eyes grew wide. That's it, he said. Theodora Flearson is messing with you because she doesn't like you chewing gazuba bubblegum. Asher nodded rapidly. Right, because her brand was Jumbo Bubble. That explains why she's trying to scare me and get me in trouble. And why she didn't bother with my mom and dad, because they don't even chew gum. Exactly, Gobi agreed. So all you have to do is stop chewing gum, and Theodora will stop haunting you. Yeah, Asher said, still nodding. And then he stopped and made a face. No, wait, I'll just switch brands. I'll throw out my gazooka and buy some jumbo bubble and see what happens. I've got an even better idea, Corby said. Give me your old bubblegum. It seemed reasonable, and not having a better plan, they walked the two blocks to the general store where Asher purchased ten pieces of jumbo bubble. Back at the house, Asher handed his remaining supply of gazooka to Corby. Then he dumped the pieces of jumbo bubble onto his desk, unwrapped a piece and began chewing. Mmm, jumbo bubble, he said chomping loudly. Jumbo bubble good. It actually was good. Really good. Corby made a face. Why are you talking like that? It's not like Theodora is a two-year-old or something. She's an old ghost. Well, I don't know, Asher replied defensively. I've never talked to a ghost before and I just want to make sure she gets the message. After dinner, he chewed two more pieces for good measure. Then, he went to bed. It was cold that night. Just after midnight, Asher became partially aware of someone pulling the covers up, presumably his mom. Thanks, he murmured drowsily and fell back to sleep. When he woke up the next morning, Asher looked at his desk in amazement. His gum had been arranged in a pattern again, only this time. It was a smiley face. Did you come into my room last night? He asked his parents at breakfast, but he already knew the answer. No, his mom said. Me neither, his dad answered. Why? Is something wrong? Asher grinned and shook his head. Nah, he said. Everything's good.
because Theodora was happy now. And though Ash's parents maintained there was no ghost in the house, every now and then they would find an old jumbo bubble wrapper under the piano, which even they gave up trying to explain. But Asher knew it was just Theodora having a bit of fun.